Well, okay then everybody, we gotta talk about structs. A struct is a structure that groups related variables under one name. Think of an array. An array can store multiple values of the same data type. Well, a struct can store multiple values of different data types. We can store strings along with ints, doubles, booleans, etc. To create a struct, let's do so outside of the main function. Type struct. Then we need an identifier. This is kind of like the data type. Suppose we're going to group related variables for students. I'll name this identifier student. Within the structure of student, variables that we declare are known as members. I think each student should have a name member. This will be of the string data type, string name. I'll declare this but not yet assign it. As well as a GPA, that could be of the double data type. Then a boolean variable if they're currently enrolled or not. Enrolled. Then be sure to end your struct with a semicolon. Our struct student is kind of like its own data type. We can use this data type to declare variables. I'll create a student variable of this data type, and that variable will have these three different members, a name, a GPA, and a boolean variable for being enrolled. Much like with creating a variable, we type the data type, student, and then some name, some identifier. Let's name the first student, student1. Student1 will have its own name, GPA, and enrolled status. If I would like to assign the name member of student1, I would type the name of the student, student1, followed by dot. Members can be accessed with a dot, also known as the class member access operator. I'll assign the name member and set this equal to Spongebob. I'll assign student1's GPA, student1.gpa. I'll give Spongebob a solid 3.2. Then I could set his enrolled status. Student1.enrolled. I'll set this to be true. Then we could access these members. I'll display them. Standard output student1.name. I'll add a new line. Let's do the same thing with GPA and enrolled. Student1.GPA, student1.enrolled. This is what this looks like. We have a student variable. The name member is SpongeBob. SpongeBob has a GPA of 3.2. When accessing Boolean variables, one corresponds with true, zero corresponds with false. Enrolled is set to true, so that would return one. Let's reuse the struct to create a second student. I'll just copy what we have here then paste it. We'll give the second student a different identifier, such as student2. Two. Student2 two will have a name member of Patrick, a GPA of 2.1, and he will be enrolled. That's set to true. Let's display student2's members. Student2.name, student2.gpa, then student2.enrolled. These first members correspond with student1, Spongebob, 3.2, 1 for true. The second set is for student2. Patrick has a GPA of 2.1, and Patrick is currently enrolled. Okay, one last example. Let's create student3. Let's copy what we have, paste it. Student, student3, student3.name, student3.gpa, student3.enrolled. Student3's name will be Squidward. Squidward has a GPA of 1.5. Let's set enrolled to be false, then display student 3's members. Student 3.name, student 3.gpa, student 3.enrolled. And here are student 3's members Squidward, 1.5, and 0, that means false. Now with members, you can set a default value. I'll set enrolled to be true then we don't need to explicitly state that. Underneath Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward, their enrolled member is all set to 1. With members, you can set a default value. So yeah, those are structs. It's a structure that groups related variables under one name. Structs can contain many different data types. Variables in a struct are known as members, and members can be accessed with a dot, the class member access operator. So those are structs. Your assignment is to post a struct in the comment section down below. And well, yeah, those are structs in C++.